So hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our red squirrel walkthrough. Here we have nearly an acre of woodland where we have free roaming red squirrels. So let's tell you a little bit about them. We currently have two different types of squirrel that live in Britain, the grey squirrel and the red squirrel. However, grey squirrels are not native to Britain. They were introduced in the 19th century. Red squirrels are the original British squirrel. There are obviously differences between them, and it's not just the colour. Red squirrels are smaller than the greys. They're more lightly built. They also have more pointed ears with little ear tufts, and their tails are rather more feathery than bushy. The most obvious difference, of course, is colour. Red squirrels are a fiery red. Grey squirrels tend to be grey fading to brown, depending on the individuals. Squirrels belong to a family known as the rodents. These are the gnawing mammals, and something that marks them out particularly is that they all have long, chisel-shaped incisors. Incisors are the teeth that you have right at the front of your mouth. In rodents, these are constantly growing and constantly being worn down. The majority of rodents are plant eaters, and they tend to eat fairly tough material. One of them that we have here at Wildwood is the beaver. As you probably know, they can actually chew through trees. Squirrels, they mainly chew through nuts and seeds, but they'll also eat bark and twigs, and occasionally leaves. It's probably worth mentioning that rodents are the biggest known group of mammals. There are over 1,000 known types of rodent in the world, and they make up about 40% of all known types of mammal. They come in all different sizes and shapes, everything from ones that live underground, ones that live in the water, and ones that live up the trees. That's the role that the squirrels have taken. Known as being arboreal, they'll spend a lot of their time in the treetops. Red squirrels actually have double-jointed ankles to make it much easier to climb up and down tree trunks, and they use their long tails for balance. They are remarkably acrobatic, and we've quite often seen them in here running and jumping, and even chasing each other, from treetop to treetop, from branch to branch. If you ask people to name one fact about red squirrels. They'd probably say that they are rare, and that's absolutely true. However, that wasn't always the case. Originally, they were the only squirrels in Britain. They could be found in every type of woodland, both broadleafed, coniferous, and mixed, and pretty much could be found from coast to coast. Again, most people would say the grey squirrels are to blame. The truth is, the red squirrels had other problems. In the Middle Ages, red squirrel fur was the most widely used fur for robes and other clothes. Thousands of skins were imported every year to Britain, particularly from the Baltic countries. And another problem the red squirrels encountered was deforestation. We tend to think today of deforestation in places like the Amazon or Southeast Asia, but exactly the same thing was happening in the Tudor times. The forests were being cut down for timber, particularly for warships. The Tudors actually encountered an energy crisis and had to start looking at alternative sources of fuel, including mining coal. The big problem, though, came in the 19th century, and that came with the arrival of the grey squirrels. This is one of those occasions when human beings are 100% to blame. There was a fashion for collecting unusual animals and then releasing them into the grounds of stately homes. This happened with the grey squirrels in at least 10 to 20 different locations, and from there they spread. Why did they take over from the red squirrels? Well, a couple of different reasons. First, the greys are a little bit larger and frankly a bit bossier than the red squirrels. Also, they have the ability to eat seeds and nuts at an earlier stage than the reds. One of my colleagues described it very nicely by, imagine you can eat in a banana when it's nice and yellow, but the grey squirrel can eat the banana when it's still green. That means he's going to get to the food before you do, and you're never going to get a banana. It's exactly the same thing with things like acorns. 
The red squirrels will wait for the acorns to ripen, but the grey squirrels can eat them while they're still green. I should state, as far as we know, grey squirrels don't eat bananas. The major problem was, however, that grey squirrels carried a lot of diseases that the red squirrels had no immunity to. The most famous one is squirrel pox, but there were several others. This is something that we've seen time and time again. It actually happened with human beings in South America and Central America with the arrival of the conquistadors. The conquistadors had diseases like smallpox. They either had resistance or immunity to those diseases, but the local people didn't. This is exactly what was happening with the reds. They'd catch the diseases and either sicken or die, and the greys would actually move in. Today, you find red squirrels living in areas where grey squirrels don't do so well, particularly the conifer forests. If you wanted to see red squirrels in the wild in Britain today, you generally have to go for either the wild areas, like the middle of Wales or the Scottish Highlands, or to one of the islands. Red squirrels live quite happily on the Isle of Wight, the Isle of Man, and Brown Sea Island, and these are all locations where the grey squirrels never reached. To give you an idea of the numbers, it's currently believed that we have about 138,000 red squirrels in Britain. And we also have over 2 million greys. The good news, though, is that things are changing for the red squirrels. Not only are we more aware of their problems and what they need, but are projects going ahead that are showing great success. For the last 10 years, Wildwood has been part of a reintroduction scheme on the island of Anglesey, just off the coast of Wales. Red squirrels born here at Wildwood have been transferred out there to join the native population. And it's proved so successful that it is now self-sustaining. A second site is now being worked on in the centre of Wales, and again, is showing very, very good results. One of the main reasons that we actually set up the Red Squirrel walkthrough is to show people what it could look like in Kent. Long term, we would like to see red squirrels brought back into the Kentish countryside. And strangely enough, one of the keys to this may be reintroducing a predator. Here at Wildwood, we have pine martins, acrobatic relatives of the weasels and the polecats who live up in the trees. Pine martins are predators of squirrels, which sounds absolutely ridiculous that we're going to help red squirrels by releasing something that will eat them. It's been discovered that in areas with red squirrels and grey squirrels, the pine martins go after the grey squirrels. It makes good sense from their point of view. Grey squirrels are larger and meatier. They tend to be a bit slower and they spend a lot of their time on the ground. Also, because the red squirrels are smaller and lighter, they can run right to the edges of branches and twigs where the pine martins and the grey squirrels can't reach. So hopefully, the red squirrel walkthrough here at Wildwood isn't just a snapshot of the past, but a potential vision of the future. Now, I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about the elusive red squirrels, and I hope you have a chance to see them for yourselves when you come to visit us here at Wildwood.